I haven't said much. Uh, we're going to look through the results, um, which will, should hopefully paint a better picture for why this works, how this works, or what it's doing. Um, so the primary advantage of Slash, as we went over, is the efficient integration of neural probabilistic and symbolic computations, um, which is a lot of words, uh, that basically boils down to we do things good. We did it five evaluations in this paper, um, the kind of against a couple of bench, like major benchmarks to data sets that we'll get into in just a minute. Um, to show the advantages of slash on deep details. Thank you. Thank you. So with these uh, two benchmark data sets, we have MNIST for MNIST edition, which is the picture picture, give me a sum. And then we had shape world, which is I have a box that has four different shapes with different colors. Classify them for me. Um, these random seeds for parameter initialization. And then after that, they went ahead and made their own shape world. So their shape world was a utilized or named shape world four. Um, each one has one to four objects, so it's not just have to have four, you can have just one of the four. Each object will have a specific color, shade, shape, and size. And between all these attributes, there's about 84 combinations that they can have. And then the performance for the MNIST edition is classification accuracy. And as far as shape world four, uh, experiments are based on average precision. So everything else was trained in discriminative fashion, but the MNIST edition for the generative stuff was uh, the only model not trained in that matter. Uh, they didn't really go over it exactly how they. So there, here there are five evaluations. There was the outperforming soda DPPLs in MNIST edition, which is picture picture sum. They had handling missing data with slash. The true density estimation, which allows for generative learning. That's probably my favorite one. Um, we have improved concept learning via slash and improved compositional generalization uh, with slash. So we'll go into evaluation. So evaluation one was pretty neat. It's going to be this left chart, which is test accuracies. You'll see that the this edition that's determining handwritten digits and then summing them. Slash with the probabilistic circuit was lower than the rest. You'll see that that right here has a lower accuracy than everything else. But they've kind of chalked that up to probabilistic circuits learning true mixture densities and not a combinational probability. So a combinational probability tends to be a little bit more accurate um, just because it's learning if this, then what, versus a true mixture density, which is going to be more useful when we get to the generative learning. You know, blow your mind. Um, evaluation two. Evaluation two is the missing data. Which the pixels of the image are missing. That's what um, John was talking about when he was going through the circuits. If I'm missing like eight pixel data, is that going to affect my, my prediction? Um, that's going to be the right chart. Um, the numbers on the side here is how many pixels are missing. So you'll see that the average accuracy goes down as more pixels are missing, up to 97% of data just being gone. With the deep probability uh, deep prob log, you'll see it does really, really good when it has 50% data missing. But the minute we jump up to 80, it's it's down, it's down pretty bad. It's down by something like 29%. Or yeah. 90% it drops down to 7%, give or take, and 97% is down to 32 ish. Nor ASP doesn't do too hot overall. I like to say that kind of like a bench, uh, like almost like the baseline. But you'll see when we get the slash, while it doesn't outperform at 50% loss, slash with the, the, um, the DNN does really well over double um, the accuracy of the deep prob log, and its variation is much, much lower. Um, 
Here we have a 22.48 variation, up or down in percentage. This only has a 0 0.09 up down on the percentage. And you'll see with the probabilistic circuit, it just at 97% loss, we're still at 84.2% accuracy with the variation that's only 0 0.03 up or down, um, which is where you can see where that true mixture density comes into play, where like I can just lose tons and tons of data and I'm still accurate. So how is the data removed? Because like 97% of the image, if it's removed, then I don't think even a human would be able to do that. They just take pixels out. That's all they did. They said, here's a picture. I removed most of the pixels. But, uh, is there any like logic to removing the pixels? Um, I'm pretty sure it was just random. Okay. Just like take out 97% random number. No, here's a picture. It barely resembles what we had, but as long as I have like a white pixel somewhere in a certain spot, slash of the probabilistic circuit goes, oh, that makes sense. Like dumb question, but there's two images, right? So which one are we taking from Sasaka? Um, both. We can take we can take pixels out of both. That won't matter. That's the accuracy on all of the prediction. Like it's making multiple predictions. Yeah, right? This is this is like the average accuracy the, with the with their variance. Uh, what I mean is uh, that's eighty four percent accuracy on. Predicting the color, shape, shade, shape, and size all together. Uh, this is with M just addition. Sorry, if I didn't say that. So this, this doesn't have the shapes in it. This is oh, sorry, it's handwritten digits. Yeah. Is it like size of the inputs, which are like digits, one yeah. on the left, and one operated, uh, one digit is missing, and the uh, that's generative. So that's actually evaluation three. That's the really cool one. So this is the this is just like I remove pixels from both images. Right, and you want this sum. Yeah. What's the difference between like the uh, I mean the structure of the slash DNA and between the slash of these? Um it's really just what's attached to slash, so one's a deep neural network, the other one's a probabilistic circuit. Okay. And why is the variance of the West compared to that? It's what the data difference. So from what I can glean from the paper. And what makes sense to me is that the variance is so much lower, at least for the probabilistic circuit, because it's not learning of probabilistic uh, conditional probabilities. It's because it's learning the actual densities that it doesn't really care. If I'm missing something, it just looks back and says, oh, whatever. I, I, I already know kind of what's supposed to be here based on what I have up, up here in the three. Do you think the performance would be better if you like uh, remove the pixels in a patternized way? Um, if you had a specific pattern, you might do that performance, but I'm not particularly sure uh, on whether or not the patterning makes a difference because if this is the performance is based on like removing pixels that if, if you take it at a, a, a patternized, like if I did a spiral or something, it probably would still give me a pretty similar result. So, uh, we'll go with you because you have had it for a while. Um, so, this may be a very silly question, but I still want to go ahead with it. Um, so, is it like, so when you say data is removed, um, is the training done with the entire data, but the test data has a pixel is missing? Or the yeah. training has been done. So, training has to be done first on, on the actual, like, what makes sense. And then this is on the test. Okay, so the testing data has a pixel is removed and yeah. the results are done. Thank you. Uh, since we are doing the adversarial uh, testing, right, shouldn't it be done with uh, networks which are which handle adversarial inputs, right? So the comparison should be done with those networks so that we can get an accurate uh, understanding of how slashes work. Um, yeah, so that's really difficult for me to hear. I'm a, I'm a little deaf, so. So I was saying that uh, since we are working with adversarial inputs, right, shouldn't it be uh, shouldn't the slash be compared with Networks will specifically handle this and give a better accuracy. Yeah, so you're saying it should be compared with other others of its class, yeah. basically. So deep problem is a DPPL, NeurASP is a DPPL, the slash of the DNN is a deep neural network. This is supposed to handle things that the DPPL can't. It's basically saying we're better than a DPPL. We can do the same things a DPPL can do. And more. 
I guess is the main point. That's true, but I was thinking about the art of domain in which they are getting compared by. Shouldn't there be someone from the which is performing better than that? There's not really another example of this of something as powerful as Slash right now, as far as what I can tell. I think he was trying to ask so, like, can, 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 is it possible to take uh, Slash DNA and then attach you know some kind of adversarial adversarial you know network? Um, such that it might be better than even the slash PC. So we say, or just attach, but I would say comparison so that we could drive up its results. Not necessarily attaching it, but comparing compare them side by side to see how they're better. So an adversarial network alongside of it that should be within the same class. Um, I don't know if there is another network that's in the same class as this. And I don't think so. I think that's. Well, I guess the issue is that you know if you're not interfacing the adversarial network with the with something symbolic on top, then I think that's why they didn't compare it directly with that approach, and they kept with the uh, the other things that are like NeurASP and it's, it's related approaches there. Thank you. Uh, let's see evaluation three. So evaluation three is a really cool one. Because um, this is the generative MNIST edition, where they just say, let's just take a digit out of the equation. We're gonna, I'm going to feed you one digit in the output of the, of the solid, and tell me what digit's missing. Which is, uh, as John was saying, was part of that. If I have probably an X given, if I have probably C given X, was probably X given C. I get to both. That's what this is showing, and. See, with just a normal probabilistic circuit, it does really, really well, just naturally. Um, and with a slash, and with a slash with probability circuit, unless the digits are pretty sloppy, I guess. Um, but the point, I guess the major point is that it's saying, look, we can actually do this. This, this works. And we haven't been able to really do this. Up to this point of being able to feed it in a handwritten digit and a sum and saying, Tell me what I'm missing. This is brand new. Other DPPLs just actually can't do this. It's, it's impossible for them because they learned the probabilistic, the combinatorial probabilities. <laughs> this doesn't rely on that. This relies on the two mixture. Um, yeah. So in the previous evaluation, yeah. they had x and y, and you had to find x plus y. And in this one, you have x and x plus y, and you have to find y plus y. So isn't it the same thing if you just switch over the equation? Because they are finding a joint probability to find a middle one, which is the same. Um, a little bit, but also it, it's more along the lines of trying to draw out the digit that we're missing. Yes, which is impressive. That, that I understand. That I completely understand. But I'm saying that if, if, yeah, what, you have to draw it out once you know what you want to draw it out. Right? If you want to draw a six, so you already know you want to draw a six, then you try to draw a six. Yeah, so, so finding that six holistic circuit, that's where like the crazy thing happens. It can determine that from just one digit, it reads that digit in, and it can find the probability. Of the missing digit and then provide the correct output and draw you the correct output. So it's not quite combinatorial or probabilistic logic or conditional logic, it's uh it's generative in nature, which standard DPL can't do because that's a generated digit. So it would be that question again. So I was trying to say that in the previous evaluation, they're trying to find the sum. Yeah. So that's saying x plus y given x and y. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to find y given x and x plus y. Yes. So that's the way they're finding y, they're saying that they're generating y. But essentially y is equal to x plus y minus x. So it's uh, kind of the same thing that from that perspective. No, they're trying to find an x2. They're saying x1 plus x2 equals y. You're given x1 and y, find x2. <clears throat> they're not finding y. Thank you. Yeah, I was saying x plus y equals x plus y. So we said the same thing. 
both of you all said the same thing. Yeah, he yeah, just yeah. used a different notation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Evaluation four was pretty neat. Um, this, I believe, was this was shape of four. Um, so we're no longer doing MNIST. We got the digits. Now we have the shapes. The evaluation four and five are with the shapes. Um, so when we're looking at the addition of logical constraints and slash, um, the attention provides better accuracy and better average precision in less box compared to slot attention. And you can see that in our graph here, we have a number of epochs, zero to 1,000, um, which they are starting to converge. We have average precision, zero to 100. Slot is the blue, slash is the red. And you'll see that slash attention just does overall better, shorter time. Um, and if you want numbers, we have numbers here. We have our test set, which is April 4 which does um, a slot attention is 90.24 plus or minus and a variance of 0.93, whereas slash does a 95.58% accuracy plus or minus 0.61, so the variance is lower and the accuracy is higher. This one is, I think the, the numbers, the, the, the chart that I kind of said, but. Five is cool. So this is compositional generalization slash when it has two conditions. So condition A has squares with gray, blue, brown, yellow, triangles with red, green, magenta, cyan, circles with all colors. Whereas condition B is the same as A, but the test set has squares with colors of the triangles from the training set and triangles with square colors from the training set. And we keep the circles with all, with all the colors Slash attention is able to perform a roughly 13% higher precision on condition B, which indicates a higher generalizability. They did not find a chart for this in the paper. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have put it up there. They said it was a very small section at the bottom of the paper where they're like, this is the last test we did. Here's a, here's a summary of it. Thumbs up. <laughs> Probably because they ran out of time. They had to submit the paper. But that's evaluation five. Um, so, in summary, the expressiveness and the flexibility of Slash can outperform many of the state of the art DPPLs that we have. Um, it's easy to combine the neural networks, the um, PCs, and the logic with Slash. Slash is a great glue. Um, and the results show that MPPs just have a great potential. This is like just the start. We can actually go up from here. That's it for me. So the authors of the paper have um, concluded with some interesting avenues to take for slash. They said we could probably uh, benchmark slash on additional data types and tasks. Um, they didn't give us uh, what kind of data types, but I guess that's for us to experiment on. And then the next thing that they want us to um, uh, do is explore unsupervised and supervised supervised plan. So pretty much here's the conclusion of our of the whole paper. Um, we pretty much uh, it's all summarized down here. Uh, next slide. And so with with all that out of the way, um, here's some like deep details without you you can look at on your own time. Um, the one that I really recommend you guys watch is the uh, Pyro, and it's a DPPL um, made with PyTorch, and it's it's a GPU accelerated deep learning framework. I posted a YouTube link. It's a it's a presentation on um, that where a couple of the people on the team that developed Pyro they went over it um, and pretty much went much more detail on how the whole um, language works. And then, as you guys can already know, um, the creator of DeepPopLock uh, they also um, did a lecture on this as well. It's just a little bit longer than the fire one, but both of them are, are under an hour long. So if you guys have time tonight, you guys can uh, just uh, read through them.